This is Watson Michael from Ceylon Institute of English and Leadership. And today, we have a very special guest with us, all the way from India, Mr. Kamlesh Nangwari. Mr. Kamlesh, he's a TEDx speaker and co-founder of FSV Capital. He is among the top 30 influencers of blockchain in India and a founding member of the India Blockchain Forum. He is Hyperledger India co-chair and a member of the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. Also, a blockchain mentor at Apiari Blockchain, COE, which is STPI and MEITY, Government of India, and advised to Web3 tokenization and CBDC startups globally. Kamlesh, welcome. Happy to have you here. How are you doing? Yeah, so thank you, Watson, and uh, thank you for inviting me here. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, how much we start off is uh, what is blockchain and how is it generated? So, uh, blockchain, if you see the basic definition, is a, a chaining mm. of blocks and where you mm. store the data in a block format. Uh, which is traditionally used the uh, uh, cryptography or uh, uh, decentralized mm. storage and but added the flavor of smart contracts and the consensus mechanism so technically when you store the data in a decentralized nodes with uh, consensus in nature to bring the mm. authenticity and the trust in the data and it also bring the immutability because you're using the cryptographic algorithm and chaining the blocks one to another block mm that thing and it, it all started with bitcoin so in 2008 okay. when the bitcoin paper launched by satoshi nakamoto to uh, give the idea yeah. of the peer to peer case transaction system and that was the starting point of the the blockchain and later uh, another uh, uh, vitalik buterin the ethereum founder and the hyperledger foundation started exploring mm -hmm. the use blockchain use cases beyond the cryptocurrency and beyond the bitcoin and now we can see the use cases all around the industries and domains with supply yeah. chain identity management mm -hmm. financial services cbdc and many more so this is the this is the yeah. initial uh, thing about the blockchain how it all started wow okay so uh, now what is the difference between hyperledger and blockchain so hyperledger is a a kind of uh, uh, non-profit organization supporting the uh, private and permission blockchain more focus on the industry okay. use cases so so uh, when this ethereum and bitcoin was uh, booming around it so uh, mm. industries like ibm like accenture came together and started the use of technology for the use cases around it so how they can apply blockchain for supply chain, how they can apply blockchain for mm. financial services. And they formed the other individual projects. And then they submitted the project to Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is an open source community. Mm. And they founded the Hyperledger Foundation. In Hyperledger Foundation, we have many different different projects. So okay. but it's not a cryptocurrency. It's not any, any running blockchain network. It's a set of tools, set of code bases, a set of community where you can start your own blockchain network in private and permission nature and solve the industry problems. Okay, so like uh, example, like could you, do you have a, could you share an example? Uh, example like, like say for example, example like Hyperledger Fabric, uh, which mm -hmm. is one of the, one of the Hyperledger projects, which is contributed by okay. IBM in 2015. And mm -hmm. it was more focused around the, use cases in supply chain, use cases in uh, identity management, use cases in financial services, use cases in traceability, uh, mm -hmm. any of the general purpose where you need the uh, data governance or data sharing, you can use mm -hmm. the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain. And similar, there are many other wow. use cases like uh, many other uh, blockchains like Hyperledger Indy. So Hyperledger Indy is another, yeah. another project in Hyperledger, which is more focused on use cases are around the identity management, verifiable credential and self-sovereign identity. So, so in a similar way, there are different different projects and code bases available in the Hyperledger Foundation. Okay, wow, right. So, um, 
what is the blockchain's role when it comes to cryptocurrencies and the central bank digital currency? So, <clears throat> cryptocurrency and central bank digital currency both are different things. Maybe we can define cryptocurrency mm -hmm. as one uh, uh, currency for any public block public blockchain network or any mm -hmm. or any of the utility uh, token running on the public mm -hmm. blockchain network. So, let's say Ethereum is one, like Bitcoin is one. And blockchain plays an important role there because how you enable this peer-to-peer -peer transaction or how you will bring the immutability on those transactions, then blockchain can play a role. Like, for example, like Ethereum blockchain is the backend layer of the Ethereum Ethereum cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is a, mm. a currency for the Bitcoin network. Now, mm. uh, CBDC is a central bank digital currency which is backed by the central yeah. banks. So let's say RBI maybe. Mm. RBI uh, uh, prints the rupee note, Indian rupee. So mm. that could be a digital form of that rupee. And that is running whether on blockchain or not on blockchain depends. But mostly uh, central banks are running on the uh, uh, blockchain based CBDC because it brings the security, it brings the immutability, it brings the programmability. Mm. Uh, and then mm. settlement times reduced to zero, uh, this kind of mm. thing. So central bank digital yes. currency is backed by the central banks. Cryptocurrency is backed by the any any public blockchain network running like Ethereum. Mm. So okay. if you uh, look at the long term, uh, how much like uh, on the long term, central bank now if you see some countries they are like I think India is also experimenting right central bank at the CBDC. What do you think about the long term like? Uh, Will it become, will it replace uh, the traditional currency? I mean, the notes, do you think? So I think definitely, even, even in India, currently, if yeah. you want be aware about the UPI or digital payment ecosystem, so is even now, mm. compared to last five years, now we reduced to the physical notes and physical currency. And now as I have digital mm. payments. So maybe if we compare to the other nations, uh, India is already digital savvy in terms of payments, but the CBDC yeah. India and for other countries it will solve many different problems. One is the mm. uh, one is the cross border payment, which is the largest use case, because mm. currently cross border payment across there are some forex charges, and it takes times. Okay. So using a central bank digital currency, where the even uh, yesterday there is a announcement by RBI and couple of different central banks doing a pilot mm. for the cross border payment with CBDC. So it will streamline yeah. stream the cross border payment. This is one use case. Another use case, I see the um, programmability. So uh, we mm. can say purpose bound token. For example, let's say if you want to issue token or want to give money to someone with yeah. uh, fixed expiry date and purpose of money, how they can use it. Like for yeah. example, in India, when you're giving subsidy or amount to the farmers for agriculture inputs, mm. but now how he is spending that money there is no record and there is no control but now suppose mm. you, yeah. if you issue this money in a form of cbdc which is a token where you can program yeah. and then given to the farmer which could be used only for this purpose so you can solve the many wow. many uh, many many issues in terms of the inefficiency of the money use uh, and this could be many programmability use cases let's like say father father giving money to son yeah. and it could be programmed yeah. to use for the same purpose so and many cases, <laughs> let's say government is giving uh, yeah. fund to the state government or maybe district or uh, district government yeah. and how they can use the money in what time interval. Let's say set the expiry date. The second use yeah. case. Third use case, like still whatever the digital payment infrastructure countries run, it consumes yeah. lots of uh, cost of infrastructure. And blockchain mm. based or CBDC based can, can reduce this cost. Another thing. Yeah. That's why India we are having a good uh, UPI ecosystem, but still we are betting on CBDC to reduce this thing. And fourth, maybe the list uh, around uh, cost of the printing money and distributing across the India mm -hmm. or across any country, yeah. because generally uh, there's a, some calculation around four to five percent is the cost. Cost is lost. Um, the amount yeah. is lost to the actual note currency. Let's say 100 rupees note yeah. could be only 95. Mm -hmm. When reached to the consumer, customer. Yeah. So these are the typical use cases of all those CBDs, and similar for the other countries as well.
Wow, super insightful conversation, right? Okay, so um, now uh, there is another thing these days, like the climate change is happening, right? So countries are going towards uh, net zero targets. Will uh, blockchain play a humongous role in time to come? Yeah, so this is my favorite topic because I lead the high uh, climate action SIG. Mm, where, wow. where we are from last four years, we are uh, collaborating with startups and, and the and the mm. government bodies and the uh, re mm. regulators around the policy making around the world. How blockchain can play a role in a carbon accounting and the credit. So generally, mm. uh, current uh, let's say Vera and Gold standard are generally used for the carbon credit ecosystem, right? And current yeah. mechanism is totally depend on then how they want to measure the carbon accounting, and that's why. A uh, very small project generally not coming to the very gold standard, and that's why a very much mm. a carbon footprint saved is not even accounted. So yeah, so when you want to prove like how much you carbon accounting you are doing, then blockchain can yeah. play a role in terms of accounting first, where you could bring all mm. the together together and transparently record the all the carbon footprint saving and emissions, and then yeah. you can use the blockchain based tokens. So because mm -hmm. Uh, currently, when if any generally currently the carbon credit generally by buy, institutional buyers, there's you no know, any uh, cons, uh, retail buyers are buying the carbon credit. But if you enable uh, retail or liquid liquid market of the carbon mm. credit using blockchain based tokens, like how the cryptocurrency bring in the investment specs, right? Similar thing, mm. uh, carbon credit tokenization is playing very humongous role in a uh, yeah. climate change. And there are this is this is two use cases, but there are many other. Let's say ESG reporting and another yeah, yeah. use cases where uh, blockchain can play a role. And I know a couple of startups already doing it. And third is about uh, 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 social impact kind of use cases, like yeah. suppose uh, how the institutions are spending money on the their mm. tax approvals. Or wow. these are the use cases, and there are. There are more than 450, more 400 projects already using blockchain in a climate change related use cases like mm. easy reporting, like carbon credit, like carbon accounting, even waste management. For example, currently we are working with one yeah. uh, one project uh, in India where we are using yeah. blockchain in a waste management recycling process to wow. account the how many, how much we rest waste plastic we recycling and then mm. how much it, it will going to impact the uh, plastic uh, going to the ocean mm. and then tokenizing it where there is a green finance or green tokenization kind of come in the picture and there are a couple of other projects like plastic bank for example is another project run, run by ibm mm. it uses a blockchain technology even uses the hyperledger technology for uh, uh, plastic credit so when you buying any product you can see the actual okay this is made by the waste recycle products or how much carbon footprint you are saving and that will that will increase the customer confidence when they buying a product mm. wow i mean it's super insightful when you say waste management comes because i remember sometime back i read on uh, bloomberg like saying uh, uh, because uh, india i mean if they look correctly if they look at waste management they can generate i think billions and billions of dollars right so yeah, like, uh, and IMF also projects by 2027-28, if I'm not mistaken, India can be the fourth largest economy by surpassing Germany and Japan. Yeah, third. Yeah. Third largest. Yeah. And I think waste management is a uh, big, uh, big area. And there are, and mm. not just the change, uh, climate change, but also it will lead to the social impact because there are mm. many uh, poor people are working in, in the segment. And when you yeah. enable blockchain based traceability and actual fair wages to them, even already mm. I see a couple of projects where people are using blockchain and uh, paying the worker in the space using uh, tokens in, in a fair mm. manner kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's super insightful. Great. So now, um, so as for the companies you represent, right? Uh, could you let us know, like, uh, what do they, I mean, you touched on it, but if you can just give a brief touch again, like on blockchain and in the hyperledger industry for the companies, especially you work with a lot of startups, right? So what, where, where is it there? So 
so generally my career in blockchain started with hyperledger and enterprise blockchain so hmm. the mo- the company mostly i work they are already using uh, hyperledger technologies hmm. or uh, and uh, building the use cases around the traceability to sustainable supply chain to waste management recycling to cbdc and all other use cases hmm. so i have worked on this project so i know the uh, good input around how the blockchain is impacting those industries mm. and i also currently working with couple of layer one blockchain so i okay. work with one uh, layer one protocol called moai technology it is a context okay. aware blockchain is a different kind of mm. blockchain where instead of the node playing a role it will it has some context let's say for example if you mm. uh, if you doing a, any payment transaction which is a more secure so more node will come in the picture and do the mining or mm. do the consensus mm. But when you paying the money to the, the coffee shop, is more less, mm. less important to the the person the people. So maybe less number yeah. of nodes come in the picture. So that way you can scale the uh, your public blockchain network according to use case and according to the context of the transaction or context of yeah. the of the person who are involved in the transaction. So this is another yeah. project I'm working with one company Moi Technology in in which based based wow. in Bangalore, but founder in okay. US. Wow. Super insightful. So, Kamlesh, like, yeah. Now, uh, what was the most up till now? Ah, okay, up till now. What was the most uh, challenging thing that you ever faced, and how did you overcome it? So, I think because as an early adopter in blockchain, the more challenging part mm-hmm. I have seen where uh, talking to someone and saying like, uh, use blockchain for this purpose, or educating them about about blockchain. and it was very, it was very frustrating when the even techy people or maybe cxos of the team ask why blockchain mm, it could mm. be done via the any centralized database it could be done via the decentralized storage so this was a challenging part but it slowly slowly when you put them the use case studies or the, mm. the or the or when you educate them in a in a manner in a layman language mm. without the tech savvy uh, buzzwords Yeah. to understand by how the blockchain is going to impact their roi is first or not if not the roi then how it will is even even cost cutting the existing uh, mm. existing business processes and bring the efficiency in the ecosystem let's say if you yeah. doing a uh, the like example of the walmart for example so i'll let mm. walmart was if if they want to track the traceability of any product they were taking around 8 days now they can do in seconds so maybe there is no direct roi but if you use this parameters like how if you now say track the traceability of a product in just 2 seconds instead of mm. the one week you can use that parameter and maybe create the new roi or new business model around it let's say for example you mm. can maybe give give the discount to the your supplier mm. because, because now you have a invoice reconciliation uh, one week in advance compared to the yeah. previous model so there are many other things can be done so when you talking to customer you need to uh, say about the use cases already happen and already happening in mm. globally uh, for example let's say nowadays i talk about the dg yatra uh, yeah uh, which is one of the uh, blockchain based uh, digital identity infrastructure for while you traveling the mm. while you travel via the uh, 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 airtable so yeah. it is a blockchain based uh, uh, platform for the identity management and the verifiable mm. credential manner so when you talk to the customer and if they not understand the blockchain you can give example let's say you you already using the dg yatra which is a blockchain based application you can't see it's blockchain based blockchain similarly in india i can talk about the tri telecom authority of india they implemented blockchain even yeah. long back uh, for the mm. spam call monitoring maybe people okay. already using it but not knowing it so when you talking with good and real world example then you can convince the people absolutely i mean very insightful right so kamlesh um we thank you very much for your taking and time to do this valuable podcast with us any final message for all the viewers and listeners out there so uh, i think if you are a developer and listening to me i think is a very great opportunity in blockchain to start developing on it so uh when you become a good job when you have a good job and make your career in blockchain 
another there are great opportunity is the contribution because there is is the starting uh, pick of the technology you need technology need more contributor more maintainers to build the new use cases or maybe uh, enhance the technology bring the performance and scalability issues security so and you can get involved with the hyperledger foundation or any of the the blockchain you prefer is not there is any bad or bad or good technology technology is good how you want to use it and how you want to get involved if you are a business founders and working on use cases and working on your existing business processes look around the technology how you can use the blockchain not just for the sake of name you want to use it but mm. really first do in deep research whether blockchain is the right technology for you then apply it definitely it will be helpful for you to grow your business and uh, bring the efficiency in the ecosystem and you and if you are in the academia so there is also good uh, uh, message to you because uh, there is a good collaboration between academia and uh, uh, companies are required for the uh, mm. innovation and research and uh, all the future engineers and the professional going to come from the academia so academia should mm. include the blockchain based curriculum and blockchain based ecosystem in their colleges or curriculum so even i seen in couple of uh, engineering universities in india already blockchain is a Uh, one of the subject already there, and even mm. even couple of you know, so already issuing the blockchain in B Tech programs. So it's good opportunity to leverage on the growing technology on emerging technology to great, create a good future for everyone. Absolutely, wise words. So for all those who are listening or watching, you can uh, follow Kamlesh on LinkedIn. He posts uh, usually on a regular basis. He posts great content, right? so you can and he shares a lots of, lots of reports very valuable insights so you can please follow him on uh, linkedin the link will be below so thank you very much once again for taking time and doing this podcast with us yeah thank you watson for inviting is nice talking to you